In this, the final section of acid-base physiology chapter, we will summarize the key points of acid-base physiology outlined previously and walk through challenge questions to test our knowledge. Let's first start by summarizing the key points. The pH of body fluids is normally maintained at 7.4 in spite of the daily production of large amounts of carbon dioxide, which is volatile acid, and fixed acids, or non-volatile acids. The mechanisms that maintain a constant pH include buffering, respiratory compensation, and renal compensation. Buffering represents the first line of defense in protecting the pH. A buffered solution is a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base. The most effective physiologic buffers have a pK near 7.4. The extracellular buffers include the bicarbonate carbon dioxide buffer pair, which is the most important buffer pair, and the hydrogen monophosphate and hydrogen diphosphate buffer pair. Intracellular buffers include organic phosphates as well as proteins, such as deoxyhemoglobin. Renal mechanisms in acid-base balance include reabsorption of virtually all the filtered bicarbonate and excretion of hydrogen as titratable acid and ammonium. For each hydrogen excreted as titratable acid or ammonium, one new bicarbonate is synthesized and reabsorbed. Simple acid-base disorders can be metabolic or respiratory in origin. Metabolic disorders involve a primary disturbance of the bicarbonate caused by a gain or loss of fixed hydrogen. When there is a gain of fixed hydrogen, metabolic acidosis occurs, and when there is a loss of fixed hydrogen, metabolic alkalosis occurs. Respiratory disorders involve a primary disturbance of PCO2 caused by hypoventilation leading to respiratory acidosis or hyperventilation leading to respiratory alkalosis. Compensation for acid-base disorders is either respiratory or renal. When the primary disorder is metabolic, compensation is respiratory. When the primary disorder is respiratory, compensation is renal or metabolic. In the challenge questions, answer each question with a word, phrase, sentence, or numerical solution. When a list of possible answers is supplied with the question, one, more than one, or none of the choices may be correct. Correct answers are provided at the end of the book on page 467. Question 1. Weak acid A has a pK of 5.5 and weak acid B has a pK of 7.5. At a pH of 7, which weak acid is predominantly in its conjugate base form? The answer is the weak acid A. This can be determined by the henderson hasselbalch equation. Substituting the value of pH of 7 and the pK of 5.5, we can determine the relative concentration ratio of the weak acid and its conjugate base form. In this question, weak acid A would primarily be in the conjugate base form. Question 2. If a person's arterial blood has a pH of 7.22, and a PCO2 of 20 millimeters of mercury, what is the bicarbonate concentration? Answer, 7.9 millicoins per liter. Once again, we can use the henderson hasselbalch equation with the bicarbonate CO2 pK of 6.1 to determine the bicarbonate concentration. Performing the calculation, the bicarbonate concentration is determined to be 7.9 millicoins per liter. Question three. For the person described in question 2, is ventilation increased, decreased, or unchanged compared to normal? The answer? Increased. We can see from the low plasma bicarbonate concentration and the low pH that this is an example of metabolic acidosis. Thus, the respiratory compensation is hyperventilation. This is reflected by the low PCO2 value, suggesting that ventilation is increased in this individual. Question 4. A person's arterial blood pH is 7.25, PCO2 is 24 millimeters of mercury, and the bicarbonate concentration is 10.2 millicoins per liter. Which of the following might cause this pattern? 
diarrhea, vomiting, obstructive pulmonary disease, hysterical hyperventilation, salicylate overdose, or chronic renal failure. Answer, diarrhea, salicylate overdose, and chronic renal failure. In examining this arterial blood gas, we can see that the pH is low, and the bicarbonate concentration is also low. This suggests that the primary disorder is a metabolic acidosis. Of the choices given, diarrhea, salicylate overdose, and chronic renal failure are the only three metabolic acidoses. Thus, they would potentially cause this pattern. Question 5. Which classes of diuretics cause metabolic alkalosis? Carbonic anhydrous inhibitors, loop diuretics, thiazide diuretics, or potassium sparing diuretics? The answer is loop diuretics and thiazide diuretics. Carbonic anhydrous inhibitors will inhibit bicarbonate reabsorption of the proximal tubule, thus causing a metabolic acidosis. Potassium sparing diuretics will inhibit potassium and hydrogen secretion in the collecting duct, thereby leading to a metabolic acidosis. Question 6. A patient is seen in the emergency department with the following blood values. pH of 7.1, bicarbonate of 10 milliequivalents per liter, sodium 142, chloride of 103. What is the acid-base disorder and what is the value of the anion gap? The answer, metabolic acidosis with an anion gap of 29 milliequivalents per liter. Once again, we see a low pH and a low bicarbonate concentration. This is reflected of a metabolic acidosis. The anion gap is calculated by taking the difference between the sodium concentration of 142 minus the sum of the chloride and bicarbonate concentrations, which is 103 plus 10. Therefore, it's 142 minus 113, which is a value of 29, giving an anion gap of 29 milliequivalents per liter above the upper limit of normal. Question 7. What are the units of the osmolar gap? These are milliosmoles per liter. All osmolality measures are in milliosmoles per liter. Therefore, the osmolar gap units will be the same. Question 8. Among patients with the following disorders, which are hypoventilating? Diarrhea, vomiting, ascent to high altitude, morphine overdose, obstructive lung disease, hyperaldosteronism, ethylene glycol poisoning, or salicylate poisoning? The answer is vomiting, morphine overdose, obstructive lung disease, and hyperaldosteronism. The cause of hypoventilation would be either primary disorders of respiratory acidosis, such as morphine overdose or obstructive lung disease, or compensation for metabolic alkalosis, which could be vomiting or hyperaldosteronism. Question 9. What is the correct sequence of these events? Sodium hydrogen exchange, filtration of bicarbonate across glomerular capillaries, facilitated diffusion of bicarbonate, conversion of carbonic acid to carbon dioxide and water, conversion of carbonic acid to hydrogen and bicarbonate, and conversion of bicarbonate to carbonic acid. The answer, the first step is filtration of bicarbonate across glomerular capillaries. The next step is sodium hydrogen exchange. The next step is conversion of bicarbonate to carbonic acid facilitated by carbonic anhydrase. The next step is conversion of carbonic acid to carbon dioxide and water. These two will diffuse into the cell, and then carbonic acid will re-disassociate into hydrogen and bicarbonate, and the last step is facilitated diffusion of bicarbonate. Question 10. If in one day 25 milliequivalents of hydrogen is excreted as hydrogen diphosphate, and 45 milliequivalents of hydrogen is excreted as ammonium, how much new bicarbonate is synthesized? The answer, 70 milliequivalents for that day. Recall that new bicarbonate is synthesized anytime there is hydrogen secretion. Both of these forms, titratable acid and ammonium, represent forms of hydrogen secretion. Thus, 45 plus 25, or 70 milliequivalents of hydrogen are secreted, and therefore 70 milliequivalents of bicarbonate has been regenerated. 
Question 11. Two patients have an elevated arterial PCO2 of 70 millimeters of mercury. One has acute respiratory acidosis and the other has chronic respiratory acidosis. Which patient has the higher blood bicarbonate concentration and which patient has the higher pH? The patient with chronic respiratory acidosis will have the higher bicarbonate concentration and the higher or closer to normal pH as they have had time for renal compensation to occur. Question 12. The patient has the following blood values. pH of 7.22, bicarbonate concentration of 18, PCO2 of 45 millimeters of mercury. Are these values consistent with a simple acid base disorder? If yes, which one? If no, what acid base disorders are present? The answer, no. There is certainly a metabolic acidosis as reflected by the low pH and the low bicarbonate concentration. However, the respiratory compensation is inadequate. The PCO2 should be lower than the normal range in an attempt to normalize the pH. Because it is actually higher than normal range, we can say there is a concomitant respiratory acidosis and therefore a mixed disorder. Question 13. In the conversion from acute to chronic respiratory alkalosis, what happens to blood pH? The answer, it decreases. Once again, as renal compensation occurs, plasma bicarbonate concentration will continue to fall and pH will return closer to the normal range. Question 14. Which is the best indicator of total hydrogen excreted in the urine? Urine pH, the filtered load of hydrogen monophosphate, or the filtered load of ammonia? The answer, the filtered load of the hydrogen monophosphate. The amount of hydrogen in the urine is determined by the urinary buffers. Urine pH is free hydrogen concentration, not the amount of hydrogen. Most ammonia in urine is synthesized in proximal tubule cells, not filtered. Therefore, the filtered load of hydrogen monophosphate gives the best indicator of total hydrogen excreted in the urine. Question 15. Which condition has the highest excretion of ammonium? Diabetic ketoacidosis, chronic renal failure, vomiting, or hysterical hyperventilation? The answer would be diabetic ketoacidosis. Diabetic ketoacidosis represents an acidosis state that will stimulate ammonia genesis in the proximal tubule. This will lead to an increase in ammonium excretion, much higher than any of the others. In chronic renal failure, there is an impaired ammonia genesis, therefore excretion of ammonia will be low. In vomiting, the metabolic alkalosis would decrease the ammonia genesis as well as ammonium excretion. In hyperventilation, the renal response should be decreased ammonia genesis and ammonia excretion. This concludes this section as well as chapter 7, acid-based physiology from the fourth edition of Costanzo.